getting the recording started. We are ready. Today I wanted to talk about how essays get graded. As you know, in the content portion of your course, you have the quizzes and activities, and those all get machine scored because it's A, B, C, or D, or true or false, and the computer program knows which are the correct answers. Now, if I have to counsel with a student who is having difficulty, I can go in and look at those quizzes so I can read not only which questions you missed, but even how you missed them. So if there was some pattern. So then if we do a DBA or just have a, a little phone call, we can talk about on this type of question, watch out for this definition. Or if you pay attention to the difference between satire and irony, if I notice that those are key terms that some student messed up on the quiz. So on the objective tests, there's less that I can do about it because the questions are pre-written. And as I've said before, I'm not necessarily a fan of the little video clips that they give you. It's not the way I would have said it, but that's what you have to go by to take the test. But on the essays, you maybe don't know, but the computer program tries to grade them too. So in addition to doing the academic integrity check, it reads the essay. Now, how smart is it when it reads the essay? It knows how many words are in it. It can tell how many paragraphs it has. It can see if there are repeated words and phrases, but it can't do spell checking. It doesn't do punctuation checking and it really doesn't check whether or not the essay really answered the goal of the prompt. So then I always have to go in and read all the essays, compare them against the prompt, and see if I can tell what you were doing, and then in some fashion scale a score that is fair and reflective of the work that you did. So I wanted to take you backstage today and sort of give you a backwards writing lesson so that if you know how I grade essays, you can write towards how they are going to get graded. And these are the general skills that would be good for success in writing any essay, not just in an English class, but in a social studies course, or if you had to write a term paper in a science class, these things would still work. These would still be helpful to you, but they will definitely make you more successful in your various English courses. So, I think if you know how the grading is going to be done, you can work towards the grade you want to earn. Now look what I said. First, you have to work. You have to actually apply some effort and you earn the grade. I have never given anybody a grade. Instead, I analyze what was performed and then I award points based on how well that was done. Ordinarily, I like to think that everybody got a hundred and then I work backwards from that where I'm looking for weaknesses or errors. So that I wanna give you the benefit of the doubt that you did the best that you could. So now I'm going to look at it and try and find ways to improve it. Also, when I write your feedback, if I see particular things I can diagnose, I'm going to try and give you some tips for doing better next time. But there are four basic things you have to do. One is you have to follow the prompt. So however the assignment is framed, whatever it is asking you to do, make sure you break down all the parts of that to make sure that you're satisfying it. Second, you have to be well organized and we're going to talk about that but you know how much I have talked about the importance of outlining. Doing clean work. And I know that I've told some people, draft your essay over in Word, run the check document feature, and let it do a check for spelling and grammar and punctuation before you cut and paste it over into Edgenuity. Now, the spell checker and the grammar checker are usually correct, but sometimes they won't be. Like in cases where you have to use an outside resource that has scientific terms in it, it may not know those terms. Or if you quote somebody 
that used a word from a foreign language. It's set up to do English. So if this word comes from French or it's the British spelling, it may think it's an error. So you still have to know better what you meant to do to overrule the machine. But I would recommend using that tool in order to clean your stuff up one time because that can save you a bunch of careless points. And then use the feedback because if I give you remarks about your paper, I'm not just reading your paper for this time. I am also reading it to see is there a pattern from previous papers you did or is there some weakness that we could fix in future papers or is there a strength that made this paper good that I would like to see more of? So you want to get that after action report. So for context for today, and because I think it's fun, I'm going to talk about it in terms of racing. Granted, we live here right by Daytona, the world center of racing. I've driven on that track a few times. And I kind of think if you came in as car 98 and you scored a bunch of 98s on your essays, you'd be a pretty happy student. So that gives us kind of a symbol to keep in mind. So I'm going to try and use this analogy of racing to give you a framework to understand what I'm looking for in grading papers because I want you all to be winners at the end. So we talk about following the prompt. Every track is different. Even here at Daytona, they have two different tracks. They have the big trioval, and then they have the wiggly road course that runs through the infield. I've driven on both of them. But you have to know what shape your final essay is supposed to take. Are they asking for uh, a letter format? Are they asking for five paragraphs? Are they giving you a particular topic? Or are they asking you to use a personal experience? So you have to know even before you start driving what your goal is. Where is the finish line? Here's some questions you can ask yourself. What's it asking for? Does it want an essay, a letter? Is it asking you to write a speech or a poem? So that's one of the first things I have to look for. If the assignment called for an essay, and it's not an essay, it's more like a personal journal or a diary entry, that's not correct. What mode of writing does it want? And it may well say directly, it wants you to compare or contrast, or it wants you to be descriptive or argumentative, take a position and convince me of something, or it may want you to describe a process from start to finish, how to do something. So you want to find what language is in the prompt that will give you a clue as to how to proceed with the piece of writing. Sometimes it will tell you who the intended audience is because sometimes you are ju not just writing it for your teacher. I know we have some assignments where you're drafting a thing to be spoken to the school board or a letter to be written to a political leader. It, if you buy something and you need to return it and you have to do it by mail order, you've got to write a letter to somebody at a business in order to get them to correct it and send you the, the right video game or whatever it was you ordered. So that kind of thing, if there's a clue in that, that allows you to sort of play act in your writing and feel the situation so that you're in the right mood, you're in the right frame of mind. If it doesn't give you any of those specifics, then you know you are writing it to the audience of one teacher. Does it tell you something about the structure? Because some of them, it may say how many words that it wants, or it may say it wants a five paragraph essay. And that's why I spent so much time on some of our previous programs talking about the five paragraph essay format and how to do your opening and closing paragraphs. So if it tells you that's what it wants, Go back and look at one of those previous videos and get the tips and get that fresh in your mind so that you can deliver what the assignment is asking for. I think we had another program where I talked about citing evidence in your papers. So it may be that it wants you to back up your statements and that evidence could come from the assigned readings that were in Edgenuity where it gave you some articles and clippings and things to look at. 
And you can reach back to those things as evidence because those are true facts. It may say you can do it from your personal experience. So then you can tell me about a thing that happened to somebody in your family or something that you saw. That's good. Or it may challenge you to do individual research where you need to go online and find an article or find a news story that backs up the point that you want to make. All of those are fine but be sure that you know which kind that the essay prompt is asking for. Now, being well organized, here's a secret. In NASCAR, they will tell you that this car is a Ford and this car is a Chevy and this car is a Toyota, and that's a lie. They have the shape of that, but those shapes are so carefully measured that there's, there's not a lot of difference between them and everything on the inside is hand built. So it's not like they went down to John Hall Chevrolet and got a Camaro and painted it yellow and took it to the track. That's not what happens. So they build it from scratch and that's what you have to do in writing your essay. And there are some samples that we can use from this. Your outline for your paper is the engine. That's what gives you your power. I can read an essay and tell whether or not somebody just sat down and started typing or if they took a piece of scratch paper and made a list of four or five points they wanted to make and they wrote four or five paragraphs to express them. And when you've got that well running outline, the essay will show it. The essay will read better, it will start stronger, it will finish stronger because it was already engineered in a certain fashion. But if you think a driver just jumps in the car, gets on the track and goes, and they haven't spent any time adjusting and building and organizing the car, that would be a mistake. So your outline is where your real power comes from. If we look at the front wheels, what you use to steer the car, that's your grammar, and I'm going to include under grammar things like your word choice and your sentence length. So if you choose to use the word stroll instead of walk, you're indicating somebody with a casual attitude, not just somebody who is putting one foot in front of another, but this is somebody who is walking with a very easy attitude. So you have told me more just by the word that you chose to use. If you said, I was scared, that's one thing. If you said, I was terrified, terrified, well, that means very scared, right? So you can amplify your words, you can play them down by what you choose. If you wanna write a short sentence and just say, I was never so surprised, period. Okay, that has punch. If you said, I was never so surprised, comma, because I had never been in this city before and had only ever seen it in movies, period. That's a longer, more complex sentence, but you added information to the end of it to help me understand why you were so surprised. Both of them are correct. And in a good essay, you'll have some short sentences, you'll have some long ones, you'll have some simple structure sentences, you will have some complex structure sentences. So that is you actually steering the essay, showing where you want it to go by the words you choose and the sentences that you construct. Now, how do we make it actually fire up and go? Where's the transmission at? That's your mechanics. These are the mechanical things that you do in writing, which are what words do you capitalize? Where do you put your punctuation? Should you have a comma on the front and back end of a phrase? Should you use an exclamation point or a period? Personally, I don't like exclamation points. If you make a strong sentence, a period is good enough. You should only use an exclamation point when your character should be screaming. So I'm on fire, okay, period would not be good. That ought to have an exclamation point. But most of the time, a period will be good enough. The computer, the ingenuity program, will take a look at numbers of misspelled words or missing punctuation. It doesn't highlight them for me, but it automatically starts deducting points from your score. Now, when I read it and I use my judgment, if I see that a person has a particular problem with, let's say, 
punctuating, pro uh, correctly capitalizing proper names. If I took off one point for every time that happened, I might be taking off 20 points just for one kind of error. So if I see that's a pattern, I don't want to keep taking off points for something that apparently the student did not know how to do correctly. So I'll take off a few and then I will put in my feedback. Be careful about your punctuation. Anytime you make a word that describes a country, so American or English or French, always has to be capitalized because the name of the country would have been capitalized. So I'll try and teach you the rule, but not take off a point for every single every single time something happens. So that's that's a place where I can overrule what Edgenuity wanted to score. But those are your three basic pieces of engineering that you have when you construct your essay. Now, we're going to make you the driver. And one of the things that is often asks of race drivers is to run a clean race. Don't hit the wall, don't bang into any other cars, don't mash up the body work because that affects how well it drives. Don't miss a gear when you shift because that will hurt the transmission. Now, all those things, they want the driver to take good care of the car and just drive it right in the groove. Well, that's what we want you to do when you're a writer. If you can avoid the mistakes and put in a good solid essay that does all the things it's supposed to do, you will probably get successfully to the finish line with a high placement. But what are the things that will tear up your car? First, those spelling mistakes. And some of the spelling mistakes that I see, I can tell is a pure accident, where in a sentence, somebody typed C-A-R, the word car, but they really were talking about their pet cat, C-A-T, and a spell checker is not gonna notice that because those are both correctly spelled words in the English language. It won't notice things like your possessive, Y-O-U-R, or the contraction, U-R, Y-O-U, apostrophe, R-E. It doesn't know what you meant to say. So these are things where you have to catch it yourself by manually reading back through your paper before you hit submit, just in case there's one of those little uh, typing mistakes. I don't know if any of you have had the experience, but if you're trying to do voice texting, sometimes the phone can't tell your accent or it thinks it knows the word that you want to say and it's trying to help you and it's really making a mistake and it's hurting you. So you got to be in control of that. Your punctuation, as I mentioned, so that if you have run on sentences where you needed some commas and periods, those are going to be things that will bang up your car. The length. If the essay prompt says five paragraphs, I've got to see five paragraphs. That means you got to have five ideas or three ideas with an introduction paragraph and a conclusion paragraph. But there's got to be some length of body to the essay. There are some where it doesn't specify any length. It doesn't tell you uh, what uh, format it needs to be. So if you give me one good, well-rounded paragraph, 75 to 100 words, and you made some good ideas and good points, that's fine. But if it's obviously way too long or way too short, Edgenuity will catch it. And it will tell me, this essay is too short to be scored or is too long to be scored. So you, you want to do what it asks for, not too little, not too much. But the biggest one is the format, not doing the five paragraphs, or if it says, um, take a position and support your, your position, and the essay says, well, there's good points, one, two, three, there's bad points, one, two, three, and you never took a position that said you like choice A instead of choice B, that doesn't meet the format of the essay. If it asks you to convince the reader in some fashion your opinion of something, then you say, my opinion is I am for it, 
and I am for it for one, two, three reasons. And you do a paragraph on each of those three reasons. Then maybe you do one small paragraph that says opponents of this idea say this, but blah, blah, blah. So you acknowledge that there's another idea, but then you conclude by saying why you were right, why your opinion is the better one. So the more that you deliver on what it was asking for, the higher I will be able to score you in terms of you formatting the essay in the way that the prompt wanted. So analyzing the prompt again is one of your most important things because they are telling you how to succeed. All you have to do is break that down and perform it. Now you can drive a dinged up car. It can have a couple of dents in it. It can get scratched up when you're bumping another driver and you can still finish the race. So the black car in this picture, yeah, he's got some tape there on it. You can see some of the paints rubbed off, but get that car turned around. He can still go. Number 42 does not look like he's going to finish the race. So what would be the essay work that would take you completely out of the race. It's the plagiarism. In fact, I just had to give a zero this morning after analyzing an essay where it was totally cut and pasted. It looks like a time saver, but a zero does not do you any good when I have to start turning in grades. If you get stuck and you don't know how to get started, schedule a meeting with me reach out by email or ingenuity or teams or anything and let's talk about it first. Let's get your idea worked out and then you can go off and start doing the activity because if you really don't understand the prompt or you don't understand what it is that they're trying to get you to do, one easy temptation is, oh, I'll just Google this. Oh, look, this guy already wrote an essay about it. Copy paste, except I already know all those places that have those essays. I've got them bookmarked. Ingenuity knows them. The other teachers in the English department know them. So there's no way to get away with that kind of stuff. On the other hand, if you talk to your teacher and say, I really don't get what they mean by visual media analysis. Well, it means they want you to look at the pictures, the colors, what was on top of the picture, the bottom of the picture, how it was framed. They're not interested in the words as being words, but maybe the size of the words, the color of the words, because you're analyzing what it looks like, not what it says. So if I can help you understand what the thing is asking for, then you can go off and be much more successful writing your essay. And there have been many times when I've talked to a student for two or three minutes and then pow, they totally understand what to do and go off and write a good essay. So I'd rather spend that two or three minutes with you and get you off on a good start than see you crash and burn later on. Then using the feedback, every driver has a crew chief who sits up on top of the box, has all the communication, gets all the statistics about the speed and the fuel mileage and all of that. And they're constantly telling the driver, you know, this guy is behind you. You need to drop lower to block him or you lost half a second on the last lap. So pick it up or we're getting close to the end of the race and we don't think you have enough fuel. So slow down in the corners and they're telling you all the things that they got to do to win. This particular crew chief, his driver won the national championship five years in a row. So you got to have a good driver, you got to have a good car, but you got to have a good coach who is telling you what to do, how to do it, what adjustments to make. Because a lot of times the car that starts the race in front is not the one who finishes in front. And it's who is good at making adjustments and correcting their mistakes and keeping that car clean and not hitting the wall, that's who gets to the, the front end and gets a top 10 finish and championship points. So when I give you feedback, I'm not just doing it because there's a blank box at the bottom of the essay. If you're doing a good job, I'm gonna at least try to encourage you and say that this was really good, keep it up, or I like how you use this example, uh, continue with that 
or that I really like your your style, that your word choice is very good, or it reads like I can hear you talking to me. It's a conversational essay. So maybe one or two sentences. I can tell you just something motivational to keep you going hard. If you're having problems, I will try and diagnose if there's a pattern to the problem. Sometimes I have even copied pieces out of the student essay and rewritten it for them and said, see this sentence here? Here's how I would have done it. Or your essay had a lot of good points in it, but I would have organized it in this essay and I would give them the one, two, three, four, five to show how I would have broken it up. So if all you do is just grab your score and go, OK, I got an 85, cool, and then move on to your math, you don't know why you got an 85. So either I'm telling you how to get that 85 to a 90, or I'm telling you why it would have been 100, but I had to cut it down to an 85. So you want to read that paragraph because I'm going to try and say something useful to you. And in closing, Yes, I really have driven the track that really is me back in January. So I've had that experience. Um, one of the things I want to do this summer is actually take the driving course and get out there in a real race car and see if I'm as good as I think I am. So um, that's why this format of giving you these tips really appealed to me and I hope you found it entertaining and useful. I'm going to go ahead and kill the recording now if we want to have any further discussion.